to our second uh, day of the conference. Uh, today is our uh, 18th International Annual Conference for the Awareness of Safe for Sustainable Development and the eighth International Conference of the Diaspora International Initiative. Uh, we started yesterday, it was very exciting, uh, quite an uplifting start with uh, lots of good papers. We moved from the UK, going to New Zealand, then we went to Libya, to Nigeria, and then we came back to the UK, so it was, and then we went back to Sudan. It was really quite interesting to see how people are coping and dealing with COVID-19 at the moment. Uh, we will continue, today is our second day, and uh, is actually much more busier than yesterday, so we're going to try our best to stick to the time as much as we can. And I'm very grateful for all the people who are behind the scene. And uh, you can see our first paper today is the effect and impact of the coronavirus pandemic, COVID-19, on tourism industry in India, a review, which is co-hosted by five people, Dr. Abdul Jamal, Dr. I mean, Dr. Siham will introduce all of them shortly. And then we will also, uh, luckily enough, we're going to have another dimension of the impact of the COVID-19 on the tourism sector, but from a Jordanian perspective. So it's quite interesting to see two perspectives, one from India, one from Jordan, and then uh, we will go to the said paper. Uh, we have two papers uh, ready to go, and then we will either go to Libya to listen to Professor Nasser, depending on electricity availability, or we will go to Malaysia. We have Professor Sadiq to also present from there. So I would like just to, to draw some uh, attention, number one, if you can see on the, we will share it shortly. There is a Facebook, this uh, event is broadcasted live. Uh, Ashraf and all his team are doing great work to try to do this. And they are broadcasting it live on uh, YouTube and in the Facebook. We will share the Facebook with you. You can share it with all your friends and colleagues who can watch it from wherever they are. And they can also ask question. We will take the question and give it to the, to the presenters. Now, uh, the other thing is, uh, can I kindly ask all the speakers who are now going to start shortly, Dr. Dima and Dr. Uh, Siham and Professor Nasir, Professor Sadiq, uh, once they have finished their presentation, uh, we're going to have one, possibly one or two burning questions. Now, I would kindly ask them if they can uh, switch off the sharing of the screen immediately after they finish so we can quickly uh, get to the, because every single minute counts on the online uh, version. Now, I think I have, uh, I can see that. I have the two, all the speakers are here. And I'm very glad to see Selma, Dr. Selma from Sudan. I can see Abdul Jamal, I think from India. I can see Siham from New Zealand, Dr. Dima. So let's just start. Now, good morning, everyone. Dr. Siham, thank you so much again for uh, waking uh, or continue to wake up uh, you have already, I, didn't, I don't think you have slept from yesterday, but I will give you the floor. I think this is a co-author paper. If you could kindly also introduce all your co-authors, because it's very important we also acknowledge them. I know that video will be there available. And uh, you have your 15, 12 to 15 minutes. If you make it less than 15 minutes, then you have the opportunity to have a question immediately after your talk. Otherwise, we will go to the end uh, and then we'll ask. So the floor is yours, uh, Dr. Siham from New Zealand. Uh, start your presentation, please. Okay, good morning, uh, first of all, everybody. And thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor Alem, uh, for your introduction, um, for my paper and for uh, the colleagues that I worked with. It's actually um, a pleasure uh, to work with those other four colleagues. Um, uh, Dr. Shahul Hamid actually worked with me here in New Zealand. He's in the Social Sciences Department in the Tiwananga OI Tairua, and this means the Maori University in New Zealand. And through him, I got introduced to the other uh, esteemed uh, three uh, professors uh, from universities uh, in India, in Tamil Nadu area, which is in the south of India, which is Dr. Uh, Jamal, Dr. Sankaran, and Dr. Sultana. Uh, we all collaborated on this paper, uh, which is talking about the effects and impact of coronavirus pandemic on tourism in, uh, in India. And as you can see, this is the context 
of uh, all my colleagues um, that we collaborated in this paper. Uh, I'm going to take you through uh, a brief introduction and then uh, the methods uh, uh, of data collection to this paper, uh, tourism uh, in, in India and the impact of COVID-19, then what is the measures, the short-term and long-term measures that has been taken by the Indian government and then conclusion. So as we all know that the COVID-19, it has been a crisis that is affecting uh, the sustainable development. It is affecting all countries and more specifically also the econ economic um, growth and more specifically uh, the topic of this paper is tourism development. So if we're going to look at the OECD uh, report, it actually said that uh, the COVID-19 crisis is actually a humanitarian crisis that is affecting people's life. So, and in this sector, uh, people, uh, the places, and all the businesses uh, were affected with that crisis. So, if we're going to look also at more specific uh, interests, is that it affected the jobs and it led uh, tourism, usually leads to the creation of lots of jobs because there are interrelated businesses to tourism. And this COVID-19 affected diverse employment opportunities. In normal circumstances, uh, usually uh, tourism jobs helps low-skilled migrants and women and students in various areas in any country. And with the COVID-19, it actually affected the livelihood of lots of people in lots of sectors. Uh, this uh, paper is actually a conceptual um, study. Uh, we've collected qualitative and quantitative um, data from different resources that have been published, uh, periodicals, government reports, and websites. And in our analysis, we looked at the impact of coronavirus on the aggregate level of um, the industry and also on the different segments of the tourism industry, like hotels, like the markets, how it's affecting people's livelihood, the people who are depending and working in the tourism industry. And this uh, map is just to show you how COVID-19 has been spread and affected the whole of India. Um, if you look at the numbers and the figures in blue writing, these are the numbers of cases. And if you look at the red ones, these, this actually shows you the numbers of deaths. So as we can see from this map, it has affected every single area. Some areas, the number of deaths are either zero or um, really minimal one or a few. If we're looking at Tamil Nadu, which is the right hand side in the corner of the map, which is the area where my colleagues they come from. They had 11,224 deaths, uh, sorry, uh, cases and 78 deaths. So if you have uh, time to look at it and see the different areas and the different cases and deaths accordingly. Now, India is actually a country that has got a lot to offer in relation to uh, tourism. Uh, like any other countries, there is, of course, domestic and foreign tourism in the country. And if you look at the, the Taj Mahal uh, picture down there, it doesn't give it actually its beautiful rights. Uh, we know uh, about the culture, the civilization, uh, the beauty of India and its ecosystems and the different uh, um, advantages of different localities there. So for India, tourism actually, it's not only a source of employment, but it's also a substantial source of foreign exchange to the country. Uh, there has been a report by the World Travel and Tourism Council in 2018 that mentioned that India ranked the third among 185 countries in terms of travel and tourism contribution to the country's GDP. And they hold the 34th rank in terms of tourism competitiveness. 
So the tourism sector actually obtained at that time at when nearly 30 billion US dollars, which is reflecting a 4.8% growth when you compare it with the, the a previous year. That shows how much uh, tourism is contributing to the country and its importance. If we're going to look that figure, that figure shows the total contribution of travel and tourism to GTB. And that was in 2017, and it's giving the projection and estimation to 2028. So here, tourism and hospitality sectors direct contribution to the GDP in 2017 was 91.27 billion US dollars. And this is expected to reach uh, 194.69 billion by the year 2028. Again, that shows the um, the importance of tourism to the country. If we're going to look at this second figure, it actually shows the number of arrivals of tourists in India. And so in 2017, the foreign tourist arrivals in India stood at 10.177 million and reached 3.88 million in January and April 2018 which is actually 10.8% the year on year. So that shows there is, has been a growth. And the reason behind this growth is all the facilitations, the flexibility and the offerings from the government policies and also the development of transport in the country and how it makes easy for tourists to obtain visas to go to India. So the government of India is also targeting to have 20 million foreign tourists arrival by 2020. And I believe that this has been impacted also by COVID-19. That figure demonstrates or gives an overall uh, summary of how COVID-19 impacted different sectors of the, in the economy and it's impacting whether the households, uh, the government, uh, the businesses, uh, the finances, everywhere. And you can see how entangled it is. So if we are going to look at the Indian tourism, uh, as many countries, their high season is usually in summer. And this is where people start booking to go and visit popular places, whether domestically or internationally. So there has been a lot of cancellations in programs in their popular areas like Delhi, uh, Kerala, Goa, and many other places. These, the programs there have been canceled due to uh, COVID-19, uh, which actually is the percentage about 40 to 50% of all these bookings during that summer. So as we can see that from these cancellations, they had a loss of 1.25 trillion at the start of this year as a result of, of COVID-19. So the government, of course, is taking measures uh, in order to combat that or order to alleviate the effect. There are short-term measures and there are long-term measures. So in the short-term measures, the Indian Chamber of Commerce, they directed the banks in order to clear the credits faster and to give more benefits for travel and, and hospitality segments. Also, the government announced 1.7 Indian rubies as special packages for the tourism industry, for people who are affected. But of course, the experts and the businesses are actually asking for 2.5 uh, Indian rubies more. Uh, also, the experts in tourism are suggesting uh, to actually supervent the terms of the loans uh, that is offered and their interest. 
Also, the Indian Chamber of Commerce had advertised between six and nine months um, it, in order to a moratorium for all principles and interests and payments and tax payments and deferment of advances and overdraft. If we're going to look at the longer term measures, uh, both the government and the private agencies are collaborating and working together in order to publicize uh, with the help of also the stakeholders about tourism. Uh, also, the government is allocating separate funds in order to help tourism back into the country. Uh, also, they are in discussions with the healthcare accreditation agencies in other countries in order to develop certain certificates and in order to follow the WHO requirements for health and safety to help tourists uh, to visit India. And these people can carry with them uh, these uh, certificates, which could be a win-win situation. Also, the government authorities are ensuring a high level of health and safety while they are looking at those measures. So if we're going to look and wrap up and try to see where are the initiatives and give specific examples of those government initiatives for tourism in India, they have a program called Deco Apna Dash. Uh, and this one was an online webinars uh, so that people would uh, participate. And it is actually in those webinars, they are explaining to um, um, Indian nationals, the people who are in India, about different destinations that people did not know about. Uh, if we're going to look also, there's another program which is called Stranded in India. Um, they, this also a website that they have launched and they are trying to help tourists. They are trying to support them. There is a helpline in order to inform them what to do, where to go. And they also uh, gave directions for the hotels that not to refuse any uh, people stranded, any foreigners, and to give them accommodation and facilitate things for, for them. Also, they have uh, travel guidelines that is in Polish, um, and they are also having uh, all these things in different languages, um, Chinese, Arabic, and Spanish, in order to uh, um, give awareness and inform people and attract people also uh, to what is the country offering. Finally, there is also collaboration actions. Uh, they are doing uh, uh, workshops, and one of them that has been done on the 24th of April this year uh, with the uh, Minister of Tourism in Saudi Arabia in order to sort things and work together on solutions. So this is the example of the Deca Apna Dash, as you can see. And the other one is the uh, website of uh, Stranded in India from the Ministry of Tourism. So in conclusion, uh, this study actually revealed that coronavirus has harshly impacted the global economy, as we already all know also demonstrated the impact of coronavirus on tourism globally and also in the Indian economy more specifically. Uh, the Indian government is working on combating this impact via short-term and long-term strategies. Uh, I believe that there is a further collaboration with other countries that is required at this stage, especially during the recovery phase from the coronavirus pandemic. And thank you very, very much. Thank you very much, Siham. Uh, wonderful to see you from the morning. Thank you very much. Now, uh, Siham, uh, because you have, uh, we are very grateful, first of all, yeah. because you did it. No, uh, no more sharing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, just a quick question. Uh, by the way, just to welcome all those who have just joined us. If you have any question, bear any question, please go ahead. We will take questions. Now, Siham, uh, uh, your results, two or three of them, because I, um, I was just trying to, more focusing on what's going on the Facebook. But uh, yes, it's affecting the whole global economy, industry, 
one of the industries badly affected is tourism. There is no question about that. Yeah, and that's yeah. why here in the UK and all other European, they are trying their best to open up their gates. And I was talking to someone in Abu Dhabi yesterday and he said they have started some measures, for example, in some hotels, yeah. you will only take your uh, particular because people, they go there for the bull and so on and so on. I mean, India is, is a huge country and this pandemic will definitely be a serious one in India. Are there any lessons learned quickly before we go to Dr. Dima from uh, Jordan? Globally, you have you can just offer at this stage. Globally, this industry is being hardly hit all over the world. Yeah. Tourism is being hardly hit. Yeah. I mean, each country will do its best to try to accommodate as much as possible. In the UK, they are trying to encourage internal uh, holiday makers. Yes, exactly. Which is, yeah. So is, is there one... any, any big lessons we can take and go move now uh, globally? Every country like Turkey, Egypt, Tunisia, America, they, all of them depending on tourism. I think um, all of us, we need to collaborate with each other. And oh, globally, everybody has been trying to concentrate on um, having internal tourism to start with. And this is the key thing. Some of the countries do not yet know about it. They, how many people do you ask about certain areas in their country? And you get shocked. They never step foot in it. So we have to start internally. That's extremely important. That's the first step. And just now, we, we, we have to have a coronavirus in order to alert us and wake us up and, 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 and ensure that our people do that. The thing is that people should not get greedy and should not increase the prices and should make facilitated or easier so that lots of people with different income levels would be able to go and visit different places. Can you believe me if I tell you that? Sometimes internally, to pay tickets internally and to travel internally is very expensive. Going overseas would be cheaper. Yes, that it happened in the UK. We had this yeah. issue here in Europe as well. We have it in, in New Zealand uh, outrageously too. And I'm sure they have it in India. So, and it's, it's, it's a trend that the, the countries want to attract the people from overseas and they not, don't cater for their own people. Please, let us start with our own people before we, we start going overseas. That is a key thing that they, they increase the, the prices. They are always asking for, for people from, it's the quality of service. Quality of service is extremely important. Cater for your internal people as much as you are catering for the foreigners. Bring the indoor ones before you go for the outdoor ones because okay. that is the next step. That once we perfect it internally, then we can perfect it externally okay excellent any other question any question like from the floor here anyone just show me the hand if you want to ask a question now uh with that uh if there's any question okay i will go to the second paper now thank you very much dr siham thank you very thank much you. now the second paper is a different perspective on the impact of covid 19 on jordan and jordan has as you all, all our viewers or all those who are in in, in in the network now or watching us on facebook is one of the countries which is depending quite heavily on tourism. And Dr. Dima is a senior lecturer associate professor at the uh, Zaytuna University. And she also have co-authors with her. And I would kindly ask you, Dr. Uh, Dima, to also introduce your co-authors. Dima is a senior lecturer. She's uh, uh, one of the, if I can say, I know every, we have, we have, we have said this many times, but we, we always feel very proud when we see senior academics women because this is uh, something we really work very hard with, with the United Nations, not to empower women, but really women are already empowered. They're already leaders. So one of them is Dr. Adina. She's a senior lecturer. She, she's a, a senior academic, uh, well-known. She has written lots of papers. So the floor is yours, Dr. Adina. Go ahead. Hello, good morning, everybody, or good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Dima Dejani, and I would like to thank uh, Dr. Siham for this uh, uh, interesting uh, presentation. And also a special thank you for uh, Dr. Alam, who uh, gave us an opportunity to meet all in this difficult uh, time. 
Um, uh, our paper is actually about mitigating the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the tourism sector, the case of Jordan. And uh, this is uh, the, the uh, work uh, coordinated by Professor also, uh, the co-author is Professor uh, Saad. Ghalib, he is actually a former dean of uh, business uh, faculty at Al Zaytuna University in Jordan, and uh, his interest is uh, actually um, 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 MIS and uh, technology acceptance. Also, it is an effort uh, of uh, Dr. Uh, Ihab al Karim, who is uh, assistant uh, uh, professor in uh, marketing and. Uh, his interest is culture also and uh, uh, e-banking. So uh, my research or, or our research objective is to adapt the multi-step uh, model uh, for altering uh, uh, tourism, uh, for altering play, uh, tourism destinations and uh, uh, place images. This model is introduced by Abraham and Kether in 2018, so as to uncover various media strategies that could be possibly used by Jordanian marketers and officials to increase the flow of tourism and to repair the destination image during and after the pandemic. Uh, our research question is to investigate the possible media strategies that could be adopted by Jordanian officials during the pandemic. And okay, we have also another question uh, is how can the Jordanian tourism sector overcome the challenges of uh, COVID-19 using these strategies? Uh, this study is conceptual study and uh, the data, it is a qualitative study and the data was collected from various uh, secondary sources to examine, of course, the, uh, the effect of uh, COVID-19 on the tourism sector in Jordan. Uh, of course, uh, there are various uh, marketing strategies, okay, to uh, a market destination during crisis. For example, we have the strategy of comms uh, to, in 2014, and he used four stages in image repair, such as being aggressive with the opponent, providing explanation, incorporating and apologizing okay, for the crisis. Uh, Abraham and Kater in 2018, they suggested the multi-step model for altering place images. And this framework provides uh, three types of strategy, source strategy, message strategy, and audience strategies that I, uh, we adopted in this paper and I want to discuss. Uh, before, uh, discussing these strategies would like to give a brief information about the importance of tourism in Jordan. It is a very important sector in Jordan economy and it constitutes actually over the 13% uh, of the total G, uh, GDP. Uh, also tourism, it is a large employer and, employ, uh, and uh, it employs more than 50% work, uh, 50,000 workers in the private sector. We have uh, various tourism uh, products uh, scattered in different parts of the country. We have archaeological tourism uh, presented in the area of Petra and Jarash. We have religious tourism presented in uh, Jordan River, Mount Nebo and Dead Sea. We have heritage tourism presented in museums and old houses. We have adventure and tourism and ecotourism uh, that is represented, uh, for example, in Jordan Trail and mountain climbing, hiking. And we have medical tourism, uh, uh, which is represented in the natural springs and renowned hospitals. We have also different responsible parties to market uh, uh, and manage the tourism activities in Jordan. The main one is the Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities with the, with the Jordan Tourism Board, uh, JTB. And we also have uh, several tourism hospitality associations. Unfortunately, 
Uh, Jordan uh, faces a series of crises since the establishment of tourism in 1925. Uh, for example, in the, every 10 years, we had a crisis. In uh, 1930s, we had the Palestinian Revolution. We have in the 40s, the Second World War. In the 50s, we have the war in Egypt. The 60s and 70s, the, the Palestinian-Israeli War. Then 2000, the Gulf War. In 2011 till 2018, we had the Arab Spring. So over the past, only over the past two years, the, the sector or the tourism sector started to recover until the outbreak of COVID-19 in Jordan in March 2020. So uh, this leaves uh, the uh, uh, responsible parties in Jordan to think about the uh, future of uh, their tourism and what are the marketing media strategies that they should uh, follow to regain international tourists and improve their destination image. Uh, as a result of my primary review of uh, literature, uh, it, uh, the, the review of literature reveals that Jordanian marketers should improve and strengthen their effort to use three kinds of strategies so as to uh, restore and to repair the image of their country and attract more tourism okay, after the uh, pandemic and also during the pandemic. Uh, so I'm going to discuss now uh, in brief these strategies, okay, and give a conclusion. The source strategy, it actually um, focuses in cooperating with international media and replacing traditional media, such as doing interviews with the press uh, uh, or uh, journalists or uh, uh, important travel agents, pre uh, doing press conferences, distributing press releases. And Jordan definitely has initiated this thing during the crisis that I have um, mentioned before. Uh, they, can, they also used uh, during the crisis the technology and internet adoption. They actually sponsored social media campaigns. They update their tourism website and they develop Facebook pages for both the Ministry of Tourism and okay, for, for Jordan Tourism Board showing different attractions in, the, in Jordan. Also, they develop a uh, different industry uh, such as the Lawrence of Arabia and uh, Aladdin, so as to show also different parts of the country and attract uh, people internationally to it. They host opinion leaders such as uh, the visit of the COP. They use webcam, uh, webcam on their websites, okay, such as the Jordan okay, Tourism Board. Uh, however, they can in the future or in, uh, during this time, they can possibly use virtual tours on the websites that may help them to develop into a complementary uh, uh, addition. Uh, and it, this becomes an ultimate tool for them to promote and market tourism uh, in Jordan. Uh, they also uh, can um, focus on digital transformation. They can uh, do their effort to access databases of online travel agents and sell packages directly at a lower prices. And this is okay, something that uh, Dr. Siham mentioned in her paper. Uh, develop uh, also they can uh, develop the media center that is already there on their website, but it is actually the, 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 the things, the articles there are not up to date, and they can update information on the tourism website. The message strategy, which is the second strategy, it focuses on the message itself. The message strategy should actually minimize the effect of crisis. Uh, and isolate the destination from other problematic uh, areas, and they can host culture and tourism events. So uh, for, for uh, Jordanian officials and Jordanian marketers, they can actually, or they can emphasize uh, the international media tribute to Jordan's effort and resilience in combating the coronavirus. 
um, uh, there were uh, there was a lot of efforts and we really started early uh, in combating okay this virus but unfortunately it was not uh, broadcasted internationally so this is what we need to do uh, if we do this we portray, uh, we, we portray jordan as a, as a safe and must see destination after okay the covid and after opening okay the airports also they can turn to promoting isolated areas such as petra and wadi ram because it's known that the disease always or the the, the virus sorry spread in the capital in the crowded areas so can, they can also promote these areas uh, also, in the mass strategy, they can accept the negative impact of the COVID and illustrate all the hygiene factor uh, measures that they have been followed in the public and touristic areas so as to uh, regain the trust of the internal tourist and the external okay, tourism. They can host also cultural events for a short period of time to show okay, different destination. These are outdoor activities. Uh, they can do it in the desert. They can okay, promote Arabian nights, uh, uh, watching stars, for example, horseback riding. And they can okay, geographically isolate from uh, highly hit uh, areas by COVID. And this is done also during, uh, Jordan did that during the Arab Spring. They always portray themselves as a safe uh, destination, a safe oasis, so they can do this okay, actually uh, uh, during COVID. Uh, they should announce the safety manuals for all standards of procedures in the hospitality institutions, and this announcement should be publicly, not only to the uh, hospitality sector, everybody should know these things. The last strategy is the uh, target market strategy. And this strategy focuses on the existing market or, okay, niche market. Uh, it uh, relates also certain traditions of the destination with a specific market. And I'll explain this okay, right now. In order for Jordan to overcome this challenge by using this strategy, they can uh, regain the trust of book, uh, both local and international tourism. They can announce okay, that the, for the local tourism, they can announce that the uh, tourism sector need the support of the Jordanian people. And this is what we call the patriotism. And actually, I have seen this. Uh, they are starting working on this. And the tourism in the south of the kingdom has been uh, increased okay, by the inflow of local tourists, such as in the area of Al Aqaba. They can promote to, uh, a tourism for neighboring Arab countries because of the, uh, uh, the closeness of this destination. They can promote to the European market and illustrate all the hygiene procedures that okay, the tourists can pass through okay, from the minute they leave their home till the minute they check into the hotel and visit tourism attractions. They can include special slogans in their marketing initiatives, such as we missed you, Jordan misses you, welcome back, you know, these type of slogans. Uh, they can also promote different kinds of tourism, such as religious tourism, medical tourism, and the sport or outdoor tourism. And it is known, okay, uh, these kind of tourism, they don't have, uh, 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 they actually, by nature, have uh, abide by uh, social distancing, you know. So in conclusion, can you actually hear me? Um, um, in conclusion, marketers could use one uh, marketers in Jordan could use one or all of the communication strategies, such as the source, message, and audience strategy, to, mit to mitigate the effect of COVID-19 in, uh, in the tourism sector in Jordan. This, okay, definitely largely depends on their expertise and on their financial capabilities. Also, um, uh, 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 I think this thing, okay, uh, marketers should create a pandemic media communication plan. 
and they also should uh, create uh, uh, the uh, uh, like crisis plan and they should monitor traditional and social media news on the pandemic they should develop comprehensive report explaining okay the covid-19 situation in jordan and the hygiene standards and procedures applied to all components of the hospitality industry Finally, they should reinstate the reinstate sorry the confidence and safety of the destination. Um, this is okay. My presentation. I just wanted to show you some of the uh, attractions and uh, the areas uh, in Jordan. This is Tetra. So you can see like tourists, they can come and, uh, uh, you know, like walk all through, okay, that destination without having uh, a very close contact to each other. This is, okay, the area of Dead Sea where they can swim, okay, and float, you know, and this is, okay, the visit of the park to um, the baptism sites, okay, and uh, in the Jordan Valley. And this is, okay, the Jordan Trail, which has uh, tracks and they can walk in different from different parts in the kingdom from the up north till down south and do different outdoor activities. Thank you very much. I think this is all and that's, and I'm ready for any question. Thank you very much, Dr. Adima. As usual, again, really very exciting presentation. Thank you very much. You're uh, welcome. I'm, I'm trying to <coughs> end the show, so sorry. No, no, it's very, it's very, it's very good presentation. Thank you very much. And also remind me two questions for you very quickly. Actually, they, uh, I, I, I can't ask the third one because there's no time. But the two question, one, the first one, given that Jordan is uh, heavily depending on tourism, you mentioned 13 percent or above. You said employing more than 50 percent. Is it not the right time that the government or the policymakers in Jordan start to think about diversification strategies? Because maybe this is just a warning that things like this could have been, they have been, they could have been again, where you cannot have any people coming to your country. Do it not like a good time for them to really think about diversifying the economy to depend on other things. Egypt went through this in the past. You remember when terrorism and so on affected Egypt many years ago and many economists have argued at that time is better for countries like Egypt or Turkey also now is to read, really think of diversification. That's the first question. And to, to answer both of them together, have you also thought as a marketer about going digital because the whole world is digital. We are talking to each other digital. And the, second, the next paper after you is about digital economies in the Islamic and Development, uh, Islamic Development Bank countries. Everything is digital and we are talking to you. I can see New Zealand, I can see London, I can see Malaysia, I can see you from Jordan. Have you thought about investing more and going into digital museum? Very good example is the European Digital Museum because that is led by my director at Sussex. All Europe museums are now digitally connected. So you can imagine now, like the pictures you have showed us, imagine this is in, in a digital... Uh... So any other things to help you diversify? So you can go ahead. Uh, for the uh, using the technology in the hospitality industry, this is a, this is something actually very important. Uh, but we still need human touch in this sector. So it is important, uh, you can use technology and certain things like checking in into the hotel, checking in into airports, uh, doing some activities, but part of the tourism experience is to know culture and to talk with people and to experience the atmosphere and the ambience and to talk to people and then know their culture. So we cannot, uh, depend 100% on the te in, uh, on the technology in this sector specifically. Uh, so this is the part of technology and uh, uh, tourism sector, but the technology is very important. And this pandemic gave us a lesson so as to be always prepared and to uh, use technology in different aspects okay, in, in, uh, in our life. However, okay, I still believe that uh, the tourism sector still needs the human touch and that is important. 
for okay the economy of Jordan, uh, yes, uh, yeah, we do have other important sectors such as the pharmaceutical sector in Jordan. And uh, even during the pandemic, one of the uh, initiatives and the effort of uh, His Majesty King Abdullah, he sent okay, some of uh, the um, uh, medication for, um, uh, for COVID-19 out to uh, uh, other uh, neighboring Arab countries. And he sent, uh, uh, he was able to help other people in, uh, in um, exporting the mask and uh, medical uh, equipment okay to international even countries so we are uh, we are still devel a developing country but we are looking forward okay and there are initiatives uh, to develop okay other sectors so as to have uh, an integration okay and uh, a, a, a comprehensive development in all of the sectors in in our economy okay thank you very much any question any burning question before I, we go to I the i have some statistics but i was not able to include everything in the no 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 you have done you have done very well and the good thing is uh, both dr siham and dr dima we have your papers and i know they are working on them so they will be in the outlook. So you can actually not only watch the video, at some point you will also read these articles, both of them. Any other question? Any other question? Okay, let me move now. I think now we have been uh, moving, flying. I think this is quite a long distance of flying from New Zealand to Jordan. Now we're going back to Malaysia. So it's a long way of flight. Now we have Professor Sadiq uh, Musa. Sadiq, is a, a distinguished professor of uh, economy. He's economist, but he has done lots of work on knowledge economy, green economy, uh, sustainability. And we're very proud that because this conference is also about the diaspora and uh, the UNESCO, when we started this project and the United Nation and last two years, we've been acknowledged in front of the whole public about uh, really, we're very keen on featuring people like Siham who are uh, and Sadiq. Sadiq is a, is a good example of diaspora and how much he can contribute back, not only to his home country, but to African or Middle Eastern. Asadik is going to talk to us, Professor Asadik, on the COVID-19 implications on Islamic Development Bank countries, member countries, the Islamic Development Banks, he will explain it better. It it's, 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 uh, include many, many countries, not necessarily Arab or African, but they're all Islamic and, and uh, developing uh, member countries on sustainable digital economies. And I think there is no better one to talk about digital economy than Sadiq. Brother Sadiq, if you can hear us. Assalamualaikum and good afternoon. Thank you very much, Brother Alam. Alam, for giving me this chance. My topic about COVID-19 implication on Islamic development, member countries, sustainable digital economies. Actually, the recent pandemic uh, show how is important is the digital technology and digital economy. And the good thing is, the Islamic Development Bank's headquarters based on Jeddah consists of almost 67 members. And the good thing, they are all in the all the continent, from Europe, Turkey, to Bosnia Herzegovina, to Africa, to Middle East, to South Asia, to East Asia, to East Asia. And they have a transformation program. And we are going to propose for them a digital transformation program. And this digital transformation program is the whole picture is digital economy. However, we are going to have also in the economy as a whole, and also we have the uh, microeconomics, especially small and medium enterprises. It should be fully digitized and we call it digital inclusion. We want to propose how the Islamic De Development Bank member countries can have digital, digital inclusion, including financial inclusion, social inclusion and every inclusion can benefit from the uh, new technology. Okay, so the digital, digital economy is very simple. Is the economy that use the digital knowledge, either human knowledge or digital technology to create value. These include know how, know why, whatever the technologies or human knowledge, uh, digital assets, whatever we have, we have to use to make the difference in the economy. Uh, the digital technology is very simple. Actually, everything 
has a digital technology from mobile phone to computers to everything. All the applications can be digital technology. And we have to differentiate here between two. We have digital divide, which is how much the level of involvement of the citizen of the uh, countries in the technology, especially the legal technology, this we call it digital divide. The one who use higher is the one who use lower that is the divide between them. However, the most important is the digital dividends, how much we use the digital technology to contribute to the economy. And this is really uh, become very clear when we have this COVID-19. So we are going to concentrate here in both digital divide and digital dividends in Islamic Development uh, Bank uh, member countries, or we call them M MSCs. How we can use the technology to make the difference. So we call this dig digital dividends, the contribution of the digital technology, including the human assets and intellectual assets, which is a uh, people with skills. Okay, uh, the coronavirus showed that the digital technology that is shaped by the digital economy around the globe is highly needed. And this study actually aims to model uh, and examine the digital technology, positive and negative externalities. Actually, st study is very wide, addressing sustainability in three dimensions. Positive dimension, which is how we make technological progress by using the digital technology to sustain the, uh, protect the environment, what we call it green development, to protect the environment, and then social su sustainability, which is uh, social inclusion and creating social uh, or digital society that is needed for knowledge economy. Uh, developing human com capital and skills is the center, is the center of the digital economy. Without digital economy, Without human skills, the right human skills, especially the digital skills, we cannot make the difference. And this is the difference between the country who develop and the country is still struggling, although they have huge resources because they don't have these skills, including Malaysia. Malaysia by 2020, as has, has been planned in 1996, and they do everything, the government from their part, they build all the institutions. Uh, the main drawback for not achieving the 2020 vision to be a developed nation, two things. Human capital development, Malaysian compared with their Asian counterparts, Korean, Japanese, Chinese, they don't have the right skills. And also they are not able to develop the indigenous technology because people will make the change. People will create the technology and people will use the technology. So it is a failure of Malaysia to be a developed nation. Uh, ICDB, here we want to talk about this. The most important we have to have institutions for, uh, uh, for every country. Malaysia, for example, they came with a multimedia super corridor, which is the area from Kuala Lumpur twin, as you know, the highest twin in, in the world, Petronas twin, they call it KLCC, to the KLIA, which is construct in 1998. So all this area, including our university, Multimedia University, as the actual the official name is Telegram University. So they have this most important institution to take care of the, all the development and institutions, the plans of the uh, digital economy, okay? They develop many flagships. The most important is uh, electronic government, electronic government, electronic health, electronic education. Now we see in this pandemic, we need everything. Some countries, they have very good, well-established electronic government, but the problem is the lack of human capitals. People, they have no skills. They don't have the soft skill like languages. Although the countries, some, some countries in, in Gulf, especially, they built very well-developed electronic government, but unfortunately, uh, the drawback is the human capital. Okay, so there are many flagships. These are the flagships, you can read all from uh, electronic government to uh, telehealth or tele tele medicine, okay? All electronic medicine. So we have all these. Education is very important because the education, uh, you know, most of the um, ISDB member countries, they have a lot of university physically. 
based their contribution uh, compared with uh, universities in the world for research and development, but reducing human capital is not that good. Also, even the rich countries, the Gulf countries, they have a lot of universities, but the research and development or post postgraduate program is very of low quality, or, or some of them is not existent. Imagine uh, big countries, they don't have uh, even PhD programs. So we are going to take care of this. Most important is the technician. If you remember, Trump recently signed a declaration that he don't care about the uh, degrees. He care about the skills. So China developed very well because they have more technicians. So the interpersonal skills of the people makes a difference. So the education is a prerequisite. And then people go for training and retraining to make the difference. So we have to have a practical vocational training for those who drop from school, for those who graduated, for everybody. Then we have to create a skill for them. But this is the success of China. They have more technician and US now is following, uh, now is looking for people with skills, regardless you are graduate from which university or you have degree. And Bill Gates is a good example who drop from the Harvard University and he create the digital technology by using the Microsoft now with Steve Jobs all the smart and digital technology by him. One has no degree and he do, 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 drop from the university and make the difference in creating Microsoft or all the digital technology as well as the Apple Macintosh uh, companies. Then collaboration is very important. We need a lot of collaboration between the universities in the uh, ISDB countries. And also we need uh, collaboration within and with non ISDB countries to make the difference in research and development, to transfer the uh, knowledge and skills, and to create good interpersonal skills. They need a lot of training, most of the SDB countries. Academic excellence is very important. Now you look at the uh, ranking of the university through US or time higher education. Now the student and everybody is looking for the ranking of the university. And this has a lot of items from research and development to staff to everything. So we need to have a, a excellence, uh, academic excellence in the ISDB countries. Foreign direct, foreign direct investment is a source of the digital and physical technology and that benefit Malaysia and all of East Asian countries. Attraction of foreign direct investment, we have to have foundation for digital economy in order to bring the big companies to invest in our member countries. Interbrian. Creating the business is very important. It shouldn't be everybody is working in uh, making uh, with salary. We have to create the culture of entrepreneurship and you have to educate the people and train them to create more entrepreneurs. Uh, we have issues of capital also, uh, the, uh, the uh, IDB or ISDB giving a lot of fund, but it's not functioning as other banks like East, uh, Asian Development Bank, the World Bank, also it needs a lot of reforms. This is the reason that the group of team, last time they create transformation program, and we will try to help them to take care of digital transformation. So many countries, they have this problem of money, but you have to have the foundation for digital economy in order to have the capital. As I have mentioned before, human capital development is very important. People will make the change and people will make the difference. We have uh, intellectual assets, which is the human knowledge and skills, and we have digital assets, the assets for uh, digital economy, and we have the physical asset all should be developed. Then these are the type of training of industry for. We can have web development, mobile application, digital marketing, digital financial communication skills, all these, vocational education provider, e-learning provider, especially COVID-19, education business to business, and also education to consumer, uh, and other business models. We have to have new business model, actually. Uh, the ISDB countries, they have a problem with brain drain. We want to change this to brain gain. So what is the brain drain? Most of the intellectual people with high skills, they migrate from ISDB countries. They go to Europe or go to uh, America or Canada or go to other countries. And in order to create this, we have to create good foundation uh, and good facilities and good uh, salary schemes to attract them, to change the story from uh, ISDB countries are uh, brain drain to brain gain, we have to gain more, more skills, okay? And we have to have very long term strategic training. We have to have a blueprint for the training. That is very important actually. 
uh, innovation is very important. You have to ha enhance innovation and producing innovative product. However, this will not be created if you don't have the right human capital. I tell you the story of Malaysia. It's very beautiful and very easy country. And the American dream, we have achieved in Malaysia, actually. Everybody is happy. Everybody has a car. Everybody has a house. Everybody can marry very easy. But unfortunately, easy life, it was negative for Malaysia. They don't have innovation to be a developed nation. And the main reason is failing to de develop human skills. And now become very complicated. We need digital skills, not only the normal skills. So this is, if Malaysia is a very beautiful country and model for Muslim country, so I was a country that they have a lot of money and they don't know how to utilize. So we have to take care in developing human, uh, human, human capital development from the school to university, vocational training to training, early training, if you want to implement uh, digital technology and digital economy. Research and development fund, you know, most of the countries in ISDBs have a very low fund. Malaysia is very good. It's giving a lot of money, but people, they don't make the difference, actually. They only, if you come with the only published paper, that is enough. While in Japan and Korea, you have to have, with a, if you are from IT, you have to come with the software, or you have to come with the report, or you have to come with the new technology or new process. So we need to to have more fund for, uh, and, and the fund should be utilized in the right way. Uh, the business model now the, is very challenging. We have to have new business model for everything, for the, for the private sector, for the government, because it's now it's challenging, we are in the digital technology and we need new business models. The way that we have to think, the old way of thinking we have to change. We have to adopt changes, make changes in the heart and mind of ISDB countries, uh, citizens, and we have to have new business model for the business. That is very important. Uh, the center of the chain everywhere is a small and medium enterprises around the globe. Almost 90 to 99 percent of the companies in every country are small and medium enterprises. And these companies are very important. In this proposal, actually, I don't put the methodology here. We have one is a specific methodology for a small and medium enterprises. Uh, which is digital financial inclusion for financial and digital uh, technology inclusion. And we have in a digital way to contribute to the economy of ISDB members. Okay. Uh, issues of rule of law, this is very important. Actually, innovation and technology innovation and new innovation need to be protected. We have to have very strong. Uh, regulation and rules of intellectual property rights protection. People spend money and time and energy. If their work is, uh, is their product or their process or the technology is copied very easy, it's not protected, nobody will do innovation. And by WTO rules, every new uh, pattern or new should be 20 years, uh, copyright, I think 10 years, and so on. Industrial design, 10 years, and so on, okay? Uh, in order to be uh, put the ISDB countries in the right track, we have to develop uh, a digital economy master plan blueprint for every country. We can take Malaysia as a model. They have this. Malaysia is very very good country in developing the policies and and and, and plans and everything. But unfortunately, the problem is the implementation. So we have to develop a blueprint of digital economy for every ISDB member. It depends on how the situation or because the level of implementation is different of, uh, of digital technology. Technology transfer, that is very important. Malaysia developed very well. I have a study of his spillover effect of foreign direct investment. We found that regardless of the aggressive direct foreign direct investment from everywhere in Malaysia from 1970s up to now, small and medium enterprises in Malaysia has have not transferred the technology and Malaysian people, they don't upgrade their skills. Actually, we call this a spill off of technology uh, is very important. So we have to find a way how we can transfer the technology through the foreign direct investment or through the partnership. And this, in, in this regard in the, uh, digital economy, we call it a smart partnership. 
uh, uh, I should say this is technology, the many issues, uh, especially the cybersecurity problems. I have a paper about cybersecurity economy. Uh, we have Sadiq, to have uh, uh, security. You, you, have, uh, you, you need to conclude now. Almost, almost I finish. Almost okay. I finish, bro. So uh, we have to develop a very good cyber laws, and we have to have a way, have to take it to the side. We have to, it is in of the ISDB must be aware what does mean by digital economy. They must know. And you have to explain to them in their culture, in simple way, in their language, and to be ready to participate in developing the digital economy. Uh, uh, regulation are very important. ICT is the negative and uh, positive side. We call it positive and ex externalities and negative externalities. We have to develop very good roles to have a good regulatory system. Uh, collaboration is very important. In this case, we call it a smart partnership within ISDB member countries and with unknown ISDB uh, member countries. Collaboration is very important. In the conclusion, actually, this study is very comprehensive. Uh, uh, in terms of countries, we are going to use uh, econometrics. And in, uh, and in terms of the small and medium enterprises and microeconomics, whatever the business, we are going to use uh, technology acceptance models. We have Zuta and we have technology environment uh, for adapt for the providers, the companies, and for the customers. And also for the top management, we can have a mixed method of uh, interview and also uh, qualitative analysis. Fadik, can you hear us? Okay. Also, the green issues, in order to, teach, to, to achieve all the progress to sustain the economy, we should be achieved by digital technology and digital economy applications. And we have to have to protect the social inclusion also and digital inclusion and financial inclusion. Uh, and also you have to fully countries, especially small and medium enterprise, like our university, we don't have any problem to do online. Thank you very much. I'm sorry if I can more. Thank you, Brother Alam. Uh, thank audience. you, Sadiq. Uh, yes, if you can stop the sharing. <clears throat> thank you very, very much. If you can uh, click okay, on stop, the... stop sharing. Yes, thank you very much, Sadiq. Uh, Brother Sadiq, that was very, very, uh, I know it's, it's, it's a big topic uh, and, and, and you tried your best to make it in... Uh, in, in 15 minutes uh, or so. Now, if there is any question for Professor Sadiq, you can uh, stop the sharing, Sadiq. Yeah, I want to stop the sharing. I'm trying to stop it. I don't know where, <laughs> if I'm going to stop it. Oh. In the bottom, the, where, where you shared, now it, you can stop it from there. But uh, yeah, any yeah, question? For... Yeah, any question from any question, uh, guys? from the audience? Any okay, question? Now stop. Yeah, now yeah, stop. we can. Yeah, that's fine. I'm just uh, looking. If okay. you have any questions, so, uh, please. Please feel free because this study is uh, actually in progress, and many many scholars and many researchers can join us. Especially, we are going to get a fund from ISDB. They have transformation fund, and they have operational fund. We try to approach them uh, to get a fund for this. So please feel free if you have any yeah, question excellent. or you have any ideas. You, no, that's, fi you, that's fine. Uh, you can communicate with me with my email. Uh, actually, is a, is a, a very, very big project. Yeah. Okay, okay Sadiq. Please, any question, guys? Yes. Uh, is there any question for Professor Sadiq? If you have any question, yeah, you have to show that yellow hand so I can see you. Now, Sadiq, just a quick question. Uh, Malaysia is one of those uh, Islamic yeah. Development Bank member countries which is known and is already cited with advancement in digital technologies and ab application of technologies. And you work in the multimedia university, which is also a university known for that. Uh, to what extent did you see uh, being advanced in digital technologies or in, uh, or in digital transformation initiatives in your country helped in, uh, Malaysia, as an example, to overcome the consequences or this pandemic of the COVID-19? 
Actually, Malaysia uh, succeed very well in, uh, in controlling the pandemic. And the, and the main reason they have the technology, in terms of utilization, they have the technology. The digital technology is widely used in Malaysia. And the most important, the people are very loyal. They follow the regulations. Uh, most of the, unfortunately, is still, we found that the public university, which is run by university, although they have a lot of fund, they don't have the facilities like our university, multimedia university, which is belong to the telecom. They don't manage very well how to do the online teaching. The private university, most of them, they are ready and they do that. So Malaysia is a good example, actually. In, can you in, give us example of, of, of digital? Can you give us example of this kind of technologies? Give us example of any technology they used, an app, or what, what did they have done? For example, in the UK, they, we have an app where it can tra trace you. If you have been, uh, your result is, uh, is positive, then they will tell you, uh, we, we, they will find out whom you have been communicating with. They will call them. They will try to isolate you. What no, I, 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 I don't think they reach this level. They don't have this type of control. Mm. They don't have this, they don't have digital control. Okay. They do it because minimal. Because they are seeing Okay, okay. Yeah. Now they don't have this. Okay. Thank you very much, Sadiq. And uh, because uh, we are very keen to give people the break, can you all join me in thanking all our speakers this morning, uh, Dr. Siham Al Kafafi, who has spoken earlier about the impact of COVID-19 on tourism in India, with her co-authors. Also, Dr. Dima who has spoken about the impact of uh, COVID-19 on Jordanian uh, tourism industry, also with her co-authors. And now we have Professor Sadiq from Malaysia. Thank you very much. It has been a wonderful morning. I would like to uh, conclude this session by thanking them again. And if you can join me all, wherever you are, and clapping for them, because I think Thank they have done a very good job. Thank you. Thank, uh, you Thank you very much for all of you. I think we're going to have uh, we have 13 minutes for break, so I'm being very precise. So we're going to break for 13 minutes. You can have your coffee. We have three very good paper uh, again lined up from UAE, from uh, Nigeria, and from Sudan. So uh, take your break for 13 minutes. Please come back at uh, 11.30. We will start sharply. Bye-bye. Please remember, if we all help and do a little bit, it will make a big difference.